Welcome in to another episode of Shake and Ball. I'm your host, Els The Truth. Happy to be back with you again. Hope you guys are ready to see some movement on the draft board because we got another first round draft. We have another running clock. As we did last time, each team will have one minute to make their selections. And a quick disclaimer, all players being selected are collegiate athletes playing on American soil. Now you know we got the highlights, we'll briefly break down some teams, and before we get everything started, let's look at our previous first round. Now honestly, it took me weeks to do this first one, and the thought behind this first one was, I was just picking the best player and the best fit for the team at the time, and this first one aired December 26, 2023. This time around, I watched a lot more film, and these are the players whose game I believe will translate into the WNBA. And after some trades and free agency, we have some players that moved up, some players that moved down, some players that stayed in the same spot, and a few players that have fallen out of the first round completely. Before we roll the clock, let's look at the draft order. LA with three first round selections, Mercury and Seattle trade out of the top five, choosing proven talent over prospect potential. That being said, the Indiana Fever, you are on the clock. Now this Indiana Fever team already has a bunch of young talent. They got two Baylor alums in Christy Wallace and Elasia Smith, two South Carolina alums in Aaliyah Boston and Victoria Saxton. The veterans on their team, Erica Willer, going into season number nine, all-star for Indiana in 2019. My Ohio sis, Kelsey Mitchell, coming off an all-star season, going into season number seven. Even with two all-stars, they only got 13 wins total. They ain't made the playoffs since Tamika Catchers retired, so getting this first round pick could really do wonders for that franchise. But I want to also briefly touch on Christy Sides before we get to the pick. She spent six seasons as an assistant coach in Chicago, one in Atlanta, two with Indiana, took over as head coach last year in 23, and I can tell you she won't have much longer if she screwed this up because it's just too much talent on this team to not be competing every night. But with that being said, let's get to the pick. With the first pick in the 2024 WNBA Draft, the Indiana Fever select, Caitlin Clark, Iowa Hawkeyes. And what more can we say about this girl? She's an absolute can't-miss prospect. I have no doubt she'll be a rookie all-star, top five player within her first three seasons. Her and Aaliyah Boston just fit so perfect together. Whether people want to believe it or not, CeCe's a willing passer and a high IQ passer too. She gonna hit Aaliyah in the right spots. And Aaliyah Boston down low is virtually unguardable if you don't send a double team at her. Playing with a player like CC, who you have to guard 94 feet, that's going to put fear in every team. They really just need to put the ball in her hand and let her do what she did at Iowa. That's what we all want to see. Caitlin Clark can really revolutionize the WNBA and have that Magic Johnson Larry Bird like effect where in 20 years we'll be saying this is when the WNBA really took off. And it's in a good place, but the kind of money she can bring in, that's going to lead to players getting bigger contracts. She's worth more than the WNBA Max already. All the extra expenses of being a professional, I see why people say they're going to lose money going pro. Going from staying on campus for free and getting NIL to a WNBA salary, you're still getting endorsement money, but you're now paying for a house, probably paying for travel, and countless other things. But that's a story for another day. Caitlin Clark, your first overall pick to Indiana. Second pick in the draft will be made by the Los Angeles Sparks. We previously had them selecting Paige Beckers, and she's now decided to stay at UConn. And shout out to my guy Nate, loyal subscriber. He was all over this one. He's been saying for weeks that she'll probably stay. And honestly, I didn't think she was going to stay, but I get it. Why be in Caitlin Clark's shadow? She can help build the draft stock of AZ Fudd, who I'm sure wants to go pro if she can stay healthy. Paige will also have another healthy year planned on that ACL, and she'll probably be the first pick in next year's draft if all stays the same. So sorry, WNBA fans, we won't get to see Paige for at least one more year, but with seniors who we expect to go pro out of her way, that'll get UConn back at the top of the rankings and into the national title race. And the LA Sparks have plenty of picks, so we'll get time to break down the team. But for now, let's get to the second pick in the 2024 WNBA Draft. The Los Angeles Sparks select Angel Reese, LSU. Angel Reese went fifth in the previous mock draft, moving up three spots to number two. I think she's the star that LA needs to replace NECA. If we count in followers and views across social media, she's the most popular women's basketball player ever. The most relentless rebounder I've seen since Sylvia Fowles, who also played at LSU. And at LSU, Sylvia Fowles averaged 15 and 11. 
Angel Reese is averaging 21 and 14 at LSU and delivered a national title in her first year. And just stop it. You guys need to stop denying her. She's proved over and over again that basketball means everything to her. That's why I went deep into the vault and pulled out some Maryland highlights. Nothing's changed about her personality. She just got the perks that comes with winning. Her freshman year, she had a game against Alabama in the tournament where she led the team with 19 points off the bench. And Diamond Miller, current WNBA player, was on that team. She played with Diamond Miller both seasons at Maryland. And let's be honest, last year LSU had five seniors on the team and none of them have played in the WNBA yet. To be fair, I think Flau J and Last Year Poa are pro players, but Last Year Poa barely played in the tournament last year and Flau J didn't score more than 10 points. My point is, Angel Reese is a leader and she will continue to do that in LA, very worthy of the number two pick in the draft. The third pick in the WNBA draft will be made by the Chicago Sky. They traded away their finals MVP, Kalia Copper, virtually gutting the team. That opens up more room for Dana Evans to develop into a starter. Marina Mabry is better than advertised, New Jersey girl. They bring back Diamond the Shields, who was there when they won it all in 2021, and also made her only all-star team for Chicago in 2019. That being said, let's roll out the red carpet for our third pick in the 2024 WNBA Draft. The Chicago Sky Select, Camila Cardoso, South Carolina Gamecocks. Camila Cardoso went 10th in our previous mock draft, moving up seven spots to number three. Playing with Aaliyah Boston took away some touches from Camila, and what I've seen this year is definitely a professional player. From the way she carries herself off the court to her cool, calm demeanor on the court, her passing IQ is very underrated. A lot of times if you don't see six, seven assists in the stat sheet, it go unnoticed, but her passing IQ is way better than advertised. What threw me off at first and why I had her at 10th is she went from starting at Syracuse as a freshman, then transferring to South Carolina to come off the bench for two years. But hey, that's what you call knowing yourself and trusting that things will work out. I don't think she's even tapped halfway into her potential. In the right system, she can be an 18 and 10 player in her prime years. I think this is the right team to develop her as well because they don't have anyone her height, so she should get the minutes. They don't have any scores, so she should get the touches. Her post-up game will work in the W. She'll anchor a defense and could win Defensive Player of the Year. Very high potential for Camila Cardoso, your number three pick overall. And if you're enjoying the show, please like and subscribe. This mock draft will be an annual thing, and it takes so much time and effort. I would greatly appreciate your feedback and support. But now the fourth pick in the draft being made by the LA Sparks is being their second first round pick. They lost NECA, of course, but they do still have some talent. Lexi Brown, Eric McDonald came over in the trade, De'Erica Hamby. A lot of people are high on Zaya Cook, I guess because she went to South Carolina, but I'm not seeing it yet. Hopefully she has a better year. Ray Burrell is a really nice shooter, but with that, let's reveal the next pick. And at number four in the 2024 WNBA Draft, the Los Angeles Sparks select, Rakia Jackson, Tennessee Lady Volunteers. Now this one right here been ready for the WNBA for a couple years now. Her efficiency is up to par. She can shoot, play one through four depending on who she has to guard. Well in the pass, very unselfish. I think pairing her with Angel Reese, two stars off the court, and letting them grow together as pros would be good for both of them. She's a fifth year senior. She's basically dropping 20 points on 50% shooting. With the four spread in LA, she can get right in attack mode. With better teammates in the W, she should see a lot of single coverage. And if that happens, she gonna bake them fools like Christina Tosi. I think she'll be a multiple time all-star. I remember her dropping 34 on her freshman year against Auburn. Her junior year, she had a 40-point game against the McNeese State Cowgirls. Solid rebounder, capable of averaging 6 to 8 rebounds, 3-level scores. She's even had a game where she hit 6 three-pointers. Her only time playing in March was last year, and she performed phenomenal. Made it all the way to the Sweet 16 and lost to the Virginia Tech Hokies. But when you see Rakea Jackson, you should just think star. She's cut from that claw for Diana Taurasi and Enrique Agumbawale. Walking bucket can probably win a scoring title. Rakia Jackson, your number four pick overall. But now the Dallas Wings picking at number five. In our last mock draft, we had them selecting Angel Reese, who's now off the board. But Dallas will be fine. They still have two all WNBA players, the world's finest unicorn in Satu Sabali, one of the best scorers in W history in Enrique Agumbawale. 
They also have Tierra McGowan, Kalani Brown, Natasha Howard. This team can really do some damage if this pick pans out and they can keep all them core players together. But now, let's reveal our number five pick in the 2024 WNBA draft. The Dallas Wings select Aaliyah Edwards, UConn Huskies. Aaliyah Edwards went fourth in our previous draft, dropping one slot to number five, and she didn't really drop. Rakia Jackson just stole my attention. That being said, I really love Aaliyah Edwards' game. She doesn't really stretch the floor beyond the free throw line, but she has a nice touch around the basket. She doesn't really have a high motor. In the loss to South Carolina in the national title game, she only had eight points. I feel like she can be more aggressive, but she tends to be passive. She's recognized as a scorer, but only has one 30-point game at UConn, which just happened on February 4th, 2024, and it was against St. John's, an unranked team. And what makes Aaliyah Edwards perfect at number five and for Dallas is her combination of rebounding and finishing under the rim. She won't get in the way of Satu or Rike, and if she catch the ball 15 feet and under, green light. And I also think there's a potential she could be being held back in Geno's motion, get everybody involved system. And another reason that I know she's ready for this level is because she's played with a lot of pro players already. Dorka Juhasz, Avina Westbrook, Olivia nelson Adota. Paige Beckers and AZ Fudd are both pro players when their time comes. That keeps her ego in check. UConn has produced some excellent pros, and no doubt they just produced another. Your number five pick overall, Aaliyah Edwards. The number six pick will be made by the Washington Mystics. They'll be without Elena Deladine. She set out the year because of some unresolved dispute with the team. They also lost Natasha Cloud, who elected to sign with the Phoenix Mercury. But the team still has some talent. They have Ariel Atkins, Shakira Austin. Brittany Sykes is still on that roster. Maisha Hines Allen, Mang Lee. The WNBA is just so good. I can't wait for the new team to come in next year. The competition level has gone up so much. Three teams finished with the same record last year. On any given day, any team can beat any other team. With there being so few teams, it's not a huge talent gap. But like I always say, that's a podcast for another day. Washington running out of time, so let's have a look at our number six pick in the 2024 WNBA Draft. The Washington Mystics select Cam and Brink, Stanford Cardinal. Cam and Brink went number three in our previous mock draft, dropping three slots to number six. And before you all jump on me, things have changed. Trades were made, but I absolutely love Cam and Brink. National title winner her freshman year, and yes, she did start on that team. They beat Ari McDonald in Arizona, made the Final Four her sophomore year, and numbers-wise, she just broke out this senior year. A lot of people think she just started shooting the three ball, but she been had that in her game since day one. They just don't let her showcase that part of her game in Santa Clara. They run a lot of post-up sets and have her occupying a dunker spot. And with her moving down to the number six pick, I feel like the teams picking one through five didn't really need her skill set. Los Angeles Sparks have Azure Stevens, and they're kind of the same build, so I don't think it's smart to pre those two in the same front court. Dallas has Tierra McGowan and Kalani Brown, and they probably going to crush her in practice, so she probably wouldn't get much playing time there. And I'm sorry, you can't put her at number one over Caitlin Clark. But in Washington, pairing her with curly-haired Kira, now you're cooking with hot grease. Two shot blockers that can run the floor, that's something you can build around. I think she'll need a year or two, but once things start clicking, she can be a nice number two or number three on a championship team. Cam Brink, your number six pick. Minnesota Lynx will be picking at number seven, and I absolutely love this team, particularly Feces Pieces, a.k.a. Nafisa Callier. That girl is one of the best in the league. I give her a top three in the W. We go Asia, Stewie, then Fee. I'm going to give you all the WNBA tier of players as well soon, where I'll give you my top 10 to 15 players in the W. We also have our New York Liberty review coming up, which will include something special from the Fisa Callier, so make sure you're locked in for that. But back to the links, they also have K-Mac and Diamond Miller. I want to see a lot more from Diamond Miller because she had a really solid rookie year. She showed us she can play and last in the league. Would have won rookie of the year if it wasn't for that Aaliyah Boston girl, you know, colorful hair, national champ. But let's reveal our number seven pick in the 2024 WNBA draft, the Minnesota Lynx select. Georgia Amor, Virginia Tech Hokies. In our previous mock draft, Georgia Amor went number 19, moving up 12 spots by far the biggest jump. We had the Minnesota Lynx picking Haley Van Lith last time, but as I said earlier, things have changed. After further review, I've noticed Georgia Amor is the straw that stirred the coffee. 
She's the head of the snake in Virginia Tech. The ball is in her hands just about every possession. She's like the quarterback, coach on the floor, decides who gets the ball when and where. She's the best passer and playmaker in the draft. And I say that because she's more pass first than Caitlin Clark. Now, she has Liz Kitley, who's one of the best bigs in the nation, but that's helped her develop into a high IQ passer. Putting her in Minnesota will help relieve FISA from having to bring the ball up the court all the time. Georgia Amor is a big time shot taker, clutch shooter, hits countless big time threes, has a synchrony with the coach, players coach, coach on the court. I have no problem admitting that I was previously wrong. She is Aussie awesome, Georgia Amor, number seven overall to Minnesota. I mean, how can you not love Georgia Amar? But let's keep it moving. The Sparks are picking again at number eight this time. We talked about their roster. They already took Angel Reese and Rakia Jackson. Not even sure if they'll keep this pick, but if they do, at this point, we just going best player available for them. So here we go. With the eighth pick in the 2024 WMEA draft, the Los Angeles Sparks select Elizabeth Kitley, Virginia Tech. And I know what you're thinking, back-to-back -back Hokies. And yes, those two players are that good. They are definitely two of the top 10 players in the nation. Liz is one of the best bigs in the draft. She has a go-to move that I believe will work in a W. She's perfected it and is one of the few players in the league with a go-to move. She just catches the ball and does a turnaround fadeaway. It's unguardable. She hits it at a high percentage. I call her the bailout queen. Just give her the ball on the block with five seconds left and the ball is in the air before the shot clock hit three. She commands a double team because most coaches know how effective she is with that turnaround. In LA, around those shooters, Rakia Jackson and Angel Reese, that is a front court playing the three, the four, and the five that should grow and eventually win. All they need to do is hunt for a true point guard or see if the guards they have can run it, but Liz don't need the ball in her hand to be effective. She rebounds at a high level, blocks shots at a high level, she fits in any offense and coaching system. The only flaw in our game, I feel like, is her strength. She can cough the ball up when teams collapse on her. So it's key to have players that spread the floor if you're going to have Liz on your team. But there you have it. Liz Kitley, number eight overall to the Los Angeles Sparks. Dallas Wings picking at number nine. We had them taking Aaliyah Edwards at number five. We talked about their roster, but in another case of the rich get richer, let's see the talented player we have them taking here. And with the number nine pick in the 2024 WNBA draft, the Dallas Wings select J.C. Sheldon, Ohio State University. J.C. Sheldon, the bait queen speedster from Dublin, Ohio. She went nine in our previous draft to Dallas, so this one is the same. She stays in the passing lane, and once she gets out ahead, forget about it. You're seeing her per 40-minute stats. She actually averaging 18, but the steals are the same. I think with some better teammates, she could have better assist numbers. She shoots the three ball well, and Dallas could use another defender like her that can guard 94 feet. She moves her feet very well, amazing lateral quickness. She once took Ohio State to the Sweet 16, and then the Elite 8 in the next year. Fifth year senior, so she has that extra year of experience. Her size and speed makes her the perfect match to run sides with Arike and Satu. Her hands are so quick. She once had a game where she recorded 11 steals. Big 10 all defense, she has double digit assist games as well as several 25 and 30 point games. Perfect size for a pro, 5'10", long arms. She's more prone to drive than shoot, can drive and kick with the best of them. Very quick first step and will finish through the contact. And don't let that frame fool you cause she do invite the contact. JC Sheldon, number nine pick overall. The number 10 pick will be made by the Connecticut Sun. Third best team in the W, talent all over from young players to veterans. What this team could use, however, is some shooting. And we have the perfect player for Coach Stephanie White and her system. Without wasted time, the number 10 pick in the 2024 WNBA draft made by the Connecticut Sun. They select Taina Powell Powell, South Carolina Gamecocks. Taina Powell Powell went 13th in our previous draft, moving into the first round, up three slots to number 10. With the way the ball moves in Connecticut, having a sniper catch and shoot player could push them over the top. They also have Tyasia Harris, South Carolina alum. Hopefully that can make the transition better for Tayana Pow Pow. In the last two years, she's shot 45% from three and has at least seven games with five threes or more. And she don't just get regular hot. She'll get into a Clay Thompson-like zone where she'll just heat check from anywhere. 
Same thing I said about her college teammate, Camila Cardoso. I don't think she's reached her full potential yet. I think she has a lot more she can do in terms of scoring and playmaking. I also feel like Don Staley has given her a lot more leeway than she'll get in the pros, but I think that she's prepared for the next level. And in Connecticut, we know how Alyssa Thomas like to get the ball moving as a playmaker, so she can use all the shooters she can get. DeWanna Bonner going into year 14, nice veteran for her to learn the ropes of the league. Dijon A. Carrington, Olivia Nelson Adota, two young players for her to grow with. This team is ready for now and later. Tina Pow Pow, your number 10 pick overall. But now let's travel to the Big Apple. Picking at number 11 is the New York City. And we know this roster got more dogs than the Westminster Kennel Club. A lot of good players remaining in the draft, but we have someone perfect for this already stacked team. So, let's get to it. With the 11th pick in the 2024 WNBA Draft, the New York Liberty select, Ioka Lee, Kansas State Wildcats. Ioka Lee went 17th in our previous mock draft, moving up six spots to number 11 and into the first round. She's having an outstanding senior year, shooting 65% from the field. And like Liz Kitley, Ioka Lee also has a go-to move that she's perfected. Very simple, down on the block jump hook. As quick as she catch the ball is as quick as she release it. New York lost Stephanie Dosen to the Mystics so they can use some help inside. They still have Niara Sabali, Maureen Johannes, two young players she'll fit in with, and of course the vets on the team to help her become a pro. JJ and Stewie play most of the minutes, but nothing wrong with learning behind some vets, getting some wins and experience. Six foot six rim protector, nice shooting touch from the free throw line at 75%, so fouling her is a mistake. The thing I like most about her game is she don't give the defense time to double her. She uses her size because she knows she can't get blocked, and having an IQ to develop that jump hook, knowing it's virtually unguardable, just shows how smart of a player she is. The future in New York, Ayoka Lee, the 11th pick overall. Last pick in the draft being made by the Atlanta Dream, and this team has a lot of talent from young players to vets. They just need to learn how to play together, and hopefully that can lead to more wins and get tougher on defense. But now let's reveal our final pick in the 2024 WNBA draft. The Atlanta Dream select Deja Kelly, North Carolina Tar Heels. Deja Kelly went 18th in our previous mock draft, moving up six slots to number 12. I think she's played tremendous basketball. I don't like the efficiency numbers, but her aggression on the court is something we need in the W. She invites contact and competition. She has a pretty good following off the court, so hopefully those fans follow her into the W. And what better place for a star to go to than Atlanta? The upside to this pick is that if she keeps getting better, learns how to convert on more of her attempts, she can be an all-star for sure. But that's really all I can say. She has a bag. She's capable of playing point guard. She can get to any spot on the court that she wants. I think she's one of those players that's more determined to show she's more than what she is off the court. She reminds me a lot of Dijon A. Carrington, may need to come off the bench for a few years, but she'll be instant offense. The lack of vets on the team is going to force her and all the other young players to grow up faster. She's a mid-range assassin and gets to the line more than anyone other than Angel Reese. I think she'll put pressure on the coaching staff. They're going to have to sign her and give her some playing time. And I don't think it really matters where she goes in the draft. She's built for the league. I like her in Atlanta because they don't really have a deep second unit. Only three players on her team average double-digit points. With Deja's mentality, she can get you 10 points, no doubt. But there you have it, Deja Kelly, your number 12 pick overall. And there you have our mock draft 3.0. Of course, we welcome all comments and criticism. Let me know what you guys like another second round mock draft. Please, please like and subscribe. Share the page. Share the video with your friends and family. I appreciate you listening and watching. I'm Els the Truth for PRNM. Talk to you on the next one.